Hello everyone, welcome back to ASA News, and this is the compilation of the news for today. Diplomat of Chinese Consulate General in Houston returned to Beijing. The diplomats from the closed China Consulate General in Houston land in Beijing. The Chinese government dispatches a chartered plane to bring all the staff of the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Houston to home. Epidemic prevention personnel are ready to provide nucleic acid testing, disinfection, and quarantine services to them. The consulate are closed after the United States government abruptly ordered it to end all operations. Indonesia joins led state trial of COVID-19 vaccine developed by China. More people in Indonesia are joining phase 3 trials for a potential coronavirus vaccine developed by Chinese company Sinovac Biotech. Over 1,600 volunteers have recruited. The vaccine are also tested in Brazil on more than 9,000 participants. The World Health Organization confirms six vaccine candidates in late-stage trials, three are from China. Another Chinese vaccine candidate, developed by China National Pharmaceutical Group, has started its late-stage testing in the United Arab Emirates with 15,000 volunteers. Indonesia President Joko Widodo calls to reboot economy amid pandemic. Indonesia President Joko Widodo calls to reboot Southeast Asia's biggest economy by turning crisis into opportunity and pushing for major transformation. Widodo makes the remarks in his annual State of the Union speech to the Parliament. Due to the coronavirus precautions, less than half of the lawmakers are present for his address, with the rest watching via live stream online. Ibarat komputer, perekonomian semua negara saat ini sedang macet, sedang hang. The current economic situation can be compared to a computer crash in which countries are currently facing stagnation. All countries must undergo a brief process of shutdown, restart, and reboot. And all countries have the opportunity to reset all the systems. This is the time for us to fundamentally renew ourselves, to make a major transformation, to implement grand strategies in the field of economy, law, governance, society, culture, health, and education. We must turn this crisis into an opportunity to make big leaps. Saatnya kita bajak momentum krisis ini untuk melakukan lompatan-lompatan besar. The government expects the economy to post near-flat growth this year due to the pandemic, which has infected over 132,000 people and caused nearly 6,000 deaths, the highest death toll in Southeast Asia. The Japan dispatch expert team to support Maurice's oil spill. Kazuyoshi Akaba, Minister of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, says, Japan will send an expert assist in the Mauritius oil spill. The commandant of the Japan Coast Guard instructed them to do their best to provide support on the ground. In regards to this incident, it has caused huge inconvenience and trouble to related parties. We would like to respond firmly and appropriately while closely watching the development of the situation. Four members teams from the Japan Coast Guard personnel who specializes on the examination of oil. As the Japanese government, we have decided to send six experts forming an international disaster relief team. Among its members, four personnel from Japan Coast Guard, who are members of an expert squad on prevention and removal of oil, will join the team. They will instruct and advise on the prevention and removal of oil at the site. A Japanese ship, MV Wakashiwo, ran aground on a reef of Mauritius to stop leaking oil into the Indian Ocean, but has already caused disastrous damage to the environment. Mauritius declares a state of emergency, and former colonial ruler France has sent aid in what environmental group Greenpeace say can be a major ecological crisis. Mitsui OSK Lines held a news conference and apologized for the incident. At least 1,000 tons of oil is estimated from the ship spilled onto the waters surrounding Mauritius. While 500 tons of oil are salvages from the ship, but there are still 2,500 tons remaining on the ship. Philippines Duterte's huge trust in Russia vaccine volunteers for trial. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte applauds Russia's efforts to develop a coronavirus vaccine and is willing to participate in trials as he welcomes a supply offer from Moscow. 
Sabihin ko rin kay President Putin na tiwalang... I will tell the Russian President Vladimir Putin that I have a huge trust in your studies in combating COVID and I believe that the vaccine that you have produced is really good for humanity. I believe that the vaccine that you have produced is really good for humanity. Russia expects regulatory approval for a potential COVID-19 vaccine and is ready to provide it to the Philippines or team up with a local firm to mass produce it. Duterte's office says Philippines stands ready to work with Russia on vaccine trials, supply and production. Duterte offers himself to be a guinea pig when the vaccine arrives. To show my trust in them, I will tell the doctors that I will be the first to get vaccinated when the vaccine arrives. We will see if it works. If it works on me, then it is good for everyone. The Philippines has amongst Asia's highest numbers of coronavirus infections after a record daily jump of 6,958 cases. South Korean doctors and trainees protesting against government plans to increase the number of medical students. Thousands of South Korean doctors and trainees protest outside parliament against the government plans to increase the number of medical students by 4,000 over the next 10 years to be better prepared for public health crises like the coronavirus pandemic. The Korean Medical Association Help Organize Protest says the country already has more than enough physicians. Health ministry officials tell to the Reuters at least 10,584 of the country's 33,836 medical facilities, including private clinics, stage walkout. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the strike comes as South Korea reports 103 new coronavirus cases the most locally transmits. Authority says they are review whether to resume tighter social distancing measures. The Thailand expats in Taiwan support of pro-democracy protest. Several dozen people in Taipei participate in a protest to support of pro-democracy demonstrations taking place in Thailand. We come here today because in Thailand today, in Bangkok, Thai university students are taking part in anti-government protests. We would like to answer the call from our brothers and sisters protesting in Thailand. But right now, we can't go back to participate, so instead we invite lots of Thai students in Taiwan and Thais working in Taiwan along to this protest rally here at Taipei train station. The protest organized by the Taiwan Alliance for Silent Democracy which includes some speeches given by local politicians and professors, also attended by a mixture of Thailand's experts and locals. Meanwhile, more than 10,000 Thailand protesters chanting, down with dictatorship and the country belongs to the people, gather in Bangkok. I'm here in Taiwan for school. I didn't expect this many people to come out today. I'm glad to see people come out. I want to see change happen to my country and let it end in our generation. At the Bangkok protest, there are cheers from students calls to curb the monarchy's power, as well as demands for the departure of former junta leader Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, a new constitution and an end to the harassment of opposition activists. Thousands of students march against Thailand government. Thousands of an anti-government demonstration at the Thailand University, the largest such protest by students challenging the government and conservative establishment, even as royalist rivals held their own rally. I'm not happy with three things, the same as students' demands, including to dissolve parliament, government resignation, fixing the constitution, and stop harassing people. Prayu Chang Ocha, tried prime minister, using his extensive power more than his duty without caring about people's rights. The protest chants long live democracy at the Tamasat University on Bangkok's outskirts with fiery speeches calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha, who first seized power in 2014 coup.
I don't know what it's going to be like in the future, but I know it will be hard for us to get our demands as the government is using its power wrongly and abducting people with different political views. It will be hard, but I support everyone here. The student accuses the pro-government demonstrators of trying to create confrontation that could lead to another military intervention. I decided to join the protest because the government has lessened the rights I'm supposed to have. Mainly I want a constitution that comes with integrity and I want those who are taking away people's rights to be out of power. During the protest, a video are played on stage where exiled Thai activist Pavin Chachaval Pongpong encourages students to talk openly about the institutions in charge. I think if I'm still scared, the country will remain the same. If we want change, we need to start doing something even if you are scared, but the change will be worth our sacrifice. Dozens of government supporters rally in front of Parliament House, saying the student protest could threaten Thailand's monarchy, which they consider a sacred institution. The anti-government protesters have made a growing number of references to the monarchy, a highly sensitive topic, and one speaker at a recent rally called for its reform. The Vietnam converts Da Nang Sports Stadium into makeshift hospital amid outbreak. Health Ministry says Vietnam almost completed the conversion of a sports stadium of Da Nang, the epicenter of the Southeast Asian country's latest coronavirus outbreak. The hospital will be ready to take patients. Some group says in a statement that Da Nang's Tien Son Sports Palace will using to treat an overflow of infected patients in the event that hospitals in the city become overwhelmed with COVID-19 cases. If cases do not continue to rise, it will be used as a quarantine facility. Aggressive contact tracing, target testing, and strict quarantining help Vietnam contain outbreaks. The ministry reports for new COVID-19 infections the total number of the cases in the country to 717 with 9 deaths. Health officials say the outbreak in Danang is under control and that they expect the current outbreak to peak in the next coming weeks. Chinese President Xi Jinping sends greetings to medical workers on Medical Workers Day. Chinese President Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China's Central Committee and Chairman of the Central Military Commission, sent greetings to medical workers across the country on China's Medical Workers Day. He points out that medical workers are an important force for the development of healthcare. He adds, since the COVID-19 outbreak, a vast number of medical workers prevented and contained the epidemic head-on and raced against time on front line of COVID-19 battle. With painstaking efforts that have made great contribution, showed an eminent spirit of respect in life, helping the injured, dying, earning high appraisals from the party and the people. She urges them to perfect their medical skills, shoulder the important responsibilities and promote the medical science so as to make the new contributions to a healthy China and improve people's well-being. And that's all for today. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you soon.